<laughs> it's got to do a bit more. It's got to do a wee bit more. It does a wee bit more in a couple of seconds. You see, this is where I can say, look at that. <laughs> there you go. On the show tonight. <laughs> yeah, you see, that's what that's for. But, <laughs> I see. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I understand. Oh, boy. You find me in different surroundings tonight. Are you in prison? Because you, you don't have a, a black jumper on. You've got... No. You've got, you've got... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm actually in Edinburgh. I am... Uh... I'm in the grass market in Edinburgh, under uh, Edinburgh Castle. It's just over here. So I'm, I'm outside broadcast as such. Um, I don't t don't tell Edinburghers because they won't like this. I'm drinking St Mungo beer. St right. Mungo is the patron saint of Glasgow. Gla Ouija's and Edinburghers don't like each other. <laughs> they really don't like each other. So, yes, I, I'm, I've been working all week, so I'm, I'm over here. Um, we've been here all very, week. Very, very nice. I think people are, are absolutely perplexed tonight about what I po post, posted up. I says uh, we're live in Scotland and Ireland, <laughs> uh, not Northern Ireland. I still in Northern Ireland, but we're going to be speaking to somebody in Ireland uh, very, very shortly. Yeah. We're on show tonight we've got Big Anthony, don't we? Anthony's coming over to speak to us and tell us what's been going on with them over at Irish uh, whiskey auctions. What's going on? What's been going on? What went on a few years ago? Etc. Etc. So yeah, he's coming on in a little bit. So yeah, I, I, there's no news tonight, mainly mainly because I've been busy all week and I haven't, I haven't really had a chance. And it's been, if I'm honest, there's been a bit of a quiet week anyway. There hasn't been a huge amount happen. There's been some stuff happen, but we'll we'll catch that. Uh... We're going to shake it up a bit, Marty, aren't we? We're going to shake it up quite a bit tonight because we're going to. Give people an idea of what to do in in, in whiskey wise in Edinburgh and further afield in Scotland. Well, it's it's actually um, it's actually I've been obviously I've been doing uh, guiding I've been touring all around. Um, in well, this week, last week I was in Scotland for a while and got home again last Saturday. Back out on Monday, so I was in. Uh, where was it? Dublin two days. I was in Belfast a couple of nights. Then come over uh, yesterday over to Pitlochry and then down to Edinburgh here today. So yeah, it's I've, I've been on the go. So it's just about some stuff that I've went and saw and experienced over the last couple of weeks that uh, are sort of are whiskey related because whenever you go out and you see all this kind of stuff, some of it looks really really cool. Um, and some of them, some of it uh, looks not so bad. It's interesting. There's sort of a few wee things that I thought were was quite interesting. There's a couple of photographs you actually took, and I actually thought they were publicity <laughs> shots from uh, the Scottish Tourist Board themselves. They were that good. Uh, yeah. But you actually took them yourself. So how yeah, is so, it over there? Is it quiet? Is it? Ah, uh, well, it's it's quite. It's a Saturday night in Edinburgh, so there's <laughs> there's plenty plenty of going on. But it's uh, it's it's raining here at the minute, or it was. Uh, Half an hour ago, ah, uh, yeah, it's dead on. My weather's been nice, it's been really nice actually. But I was over here last week and I did a few things up in the Royal Mile and whatnot. And there's the new Johnny Walker experience is open, so I put my head in there. I didn't do the tours because I didn't really have time, but I just wanted to go in and have a look and see what it was like. And today I was. <laughs> Make the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's just better internet than you get at home. Of course, you are in a capital city, so this 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 would be hard. This would be hard. No, so today, for example, I was in Pit Lockery and I was at the Blair Raffle Distillery. Now, I sent you over a couple of pictures of it. It's looking beautiful. I mean, it always really does look. look it really looks fantastic. Pictures. This look at this. We're going to put it in solo. Look at that there place. That's yeah. delicious. Yeah. You know. Now, if any, anyone who's not familiar with the Blair Raffle Distillery, it's it makes bales essentially. It makes the the, the malt for bales whiskey, and it, it really is extremely picturesque. Now we are in the off season, although we've been in the off season for nearly two years now. But when this place is up and running, they handle a huge amount of tourists. I mean. Huge amount, serious amount, because pretty much all the tour buses and coaches head up through Pet Lockery. It's it's the it was purpose built as a tourist town, and it's on the road to the Highlands, etc., etc. So when they come over, Vic Cameron yeah, saying he used to work there. Used to work there. there you go, yeah. 
The staff yeah. on it are really, really, really friendly, really good. And the thing is, they're very slick of what they do. They, when the coaches come in, they have it boom, boom, boom. But it never really feels rushed. They, they have the timings of it really, really well done. People go there. They don't recognise the brand, but uh, what they do, they, they recognise some of the Diageo products that's there because it's owned by Diageo as is probably a quarter of the Scotch whiskey trade. But it is it's really, really slick. It's really picturesque. And Pitt Lockery is lovely. Uh, we, I stayed at the Athol Palace Hotel, which sits right above it last night. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's a really, really nice picturesque little distillery. And the people there are used to dealing with uh, visitors. You know, they're used to dealing with people. And they do it really professionally. Uh, so I like them down there. They're really cool guys. Yes, I would imagine so. Uh, look, look at you. Did you get to try any exclusive when you were there or anything like that? There, yeah. no, no. They have they have bottles um, from the Diageo range. So they'll have Kalilas and there's some Mortlach stuff there and, and whatnot. And they have um, some of the more uh, collectible packages. You know, they, they do the Diageo stuff. But what they really sell a lot of is the the distillery exclusive. It's a 12-year-old Blair Athol distillery exclusive that you can't buy anywhere else. So the tourists like getting it because it is something that they can take home. But it is, if you're ever going up past that way, stop off and um, they, they take you through, show you the production, give you a, a couple of little tastings. And the guys are, um, they're, they're, I mean, they're really, really friendly and nice. So it's quite a lot to like about it. A lot of people saying very positive things about it. Mark Kerr saying, lovely distillery, enjoyed my visit. Yep. Uh, Ju Julie Mason is saying uh, it's one of her, her sister's favourite distilleries. And mm -hmm. uh, Vic Cameron saying it's a really nice site uh, and that he very really enjoyed his time there. I'm sure he did because honestly, Pit Lockery's it's, it's picture postcard, beautiful, and, and the whole place is really designed for, for tourists. I mean, sometimes it does get packed, but yeah, that's, that's one of the good things. To you in some ways. Thank you much so much success. Now, did, did you get into the bar there at all? Did you then? Oh, yes. The bar, there's the bar you go into. It's called the Mash Tun. And it's really cool the way they have it done. Um, if the, the Mash Tun bar, they don't have a massive selection. It's not hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. They have a, a reasonably good selection. But bring up the picture of the bar itself. Yeah, because... I thought you were actually in a spaceship I, I, when, when you sent me this. Look at this here. Look at that there. What is that there? That's a mash tun itself, is it? It's a mash tun itself that they've cut it out. Um, of, it's stuck with, with, with the bar, with the, the bar end behind it. And it's 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 cool. Like it's really really nice. And again, you go in if you want if you have time to spare. It's it's uh, it's good to stop off. You know. It is. It certainly certainly looks 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 the part. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't doesn't half look the part. I see some people are asking what half. We are in Scotland and I'm staying in a hotel, so my choices are limited. I'm flying home on Monday, so I'm not going to buy anything to open and take over with me. So I went down to the bar, I got myself a little. We're in Scotland, so I had to be a lag of villain 16. Very okay. nice. Very nice. Very nice. That looks like a double. It, it is, is a double. I, I just thought it was a Scottish measure, but it's a double. Woohoo. Nope. Jordy Burke saying, Woohoo, Scotland. Yes, Jordy. Yes. <laughs> Jordy's watching in Canada tonight in Prince Edward Island. If you're watching somewhere fantastic in the world, do tell us. Do tell us, yeah. Um, we will share it with everybody else and bring you on screen. Uh, Robert Ahern was asking, What are you tasting tonight? And uh, yeah. Robert Gustafson, I think, I believe, is somewhere in Scandinavia, uh, said, uh, Are you having whiskey in a pint glass, Marty, tonight? No, 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 no. He wishes. He wishes. We have we drop a we drop a Saint Mungo. Uh, if you ever go to Glasgow, there's an absolutely gorgeous uh, gable mural of Saint Mungo doing. It's one miracle was he brought a bird back to life. That was his miracle. It made him a saint. So it's him holding this wee robin, and it's, it's stunning. It's a great piece of art. Yeah. So anyway, other stuff that I've been up. The Johnny Walker experience is the new. It's opposite the Caledonian Hotel in uh, in Edinburgh. And I popped my head in just for just to, for a nosy as much as anything else. Didn't have time to do the tour, so I can't really read it. They spent a lot of money. Um, and downstairs, there's to be honest, there's a lot of staff downstairs. Generally sort of milling about. And it looks pretty slick. 
and then you go up to the rooftop, up to the, the rooftop bar, and the views from it are just amazing. There, I'll give you an idea superb. about the views. Look at this yeah. here. Look at that there. Look at that there. Look yeah. at that there. What a view that is. Yeah. That's looking towards Leith, is it? If I'm correct. yeah, that would yeah. be heading over towards Leith. And then yeah. if you look, if you look the other way, right. Hold on. Hold on. Look down. the other way. Yeah. Takes you down the new town, and with the castle sitting on the right. Now, obviously, that was a nice day. The weather sort of sparked off. But upstairs, they have a bar, uh, you know, a restaurant and a bar and so on. And it really is, it's quite nice. It's, it feels kind of exclusive. Uh, drink prices, not they're that bad. They're a little bit. I mean, you have to remember, you are in, you are in. Uh, Edinburgh, the capital, so everything's a little bit more expensive. Is that where Prince Charles was recently? The Johnny Walker experience was it? Am I am I correct in thinking he was there? Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, it was. he was. He opened it. I think he yeah. opened it. Um, yeah. But they, they do have a, a whiskey menu upstairs, which is does have some pretty good ones. It has a 1979 Prima and Ultima Poor Ellen from. Isla, 40 year old. Now, yes, yeah, £800 a shot. So it is. is that what they call it? Explorers Bothy, is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's the weirdest look of Bothy I ever saw. Bothies are supposed to be open to everybody that just walks and wanders about. <laughs> Upstairs, this place is like really Exclusive. high end. Exclusive. Really, yeah. You know, you have to be escorted up, kind of thing. And it, it's uh, it's not just you're not just going to walk in and say, oh, I'm just going to have a kip here tonight. You know, it's a bit of a. I think the word "bothies" being sort of bent by a sheep there. If I'm honest, <laughs> it is indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. no, it's quite good. And then, did, did you find anything that, uh, unusual there that you didn't expect to find there? And then, well, uh, in the Johnny Walker experience, yes. No, no, I didn't find nothing there. No, right. It was just all. It was all Johnny Walkers, and then some of the exclusives. But when I come up onto the Royal Nile, now don't I, I know where you're going with this? Don't be showing that picture just yet. Okay. Yeah. You come up onto the Royal Mile and there are lots of these whiskey shops and some of them feel quite touristy and, you know, quite a bit taggy in, in some ways, but they are what they are. They're there to, to sell whiskey. Um, <laughs> there's lots of bottles for sale and a lot of them are not exclusive, which these days, I mean, lots of bars are getting Irish, Irish whiskey exclusives. And I think in some ways Scotland's maybe lagging a little bit behind in that at the minute. Because you'd want if you were going to buy in the Royal Mile, you're going to you want to buy something a little bit special and, and exclusive. And it didn't really feel like that in most of the places you're in. There are there are some. There's uh there's actually an uh I see a guy's popped up there saying that he's drinking an Isle of Arn. There's an Isle of Arn exclusive in uh, Royal Mile Whiskies, I think it is. But it's, uh, yeah, it, it didn't feel it. But one thing I saw, and it warmed my little heart, it really did, because there are, some of the shops are selling various other spirits other than scotch. So they're selling Irish whiskies, they're selling some bourbons, they're selling um, some of the newer whiskey brands, Japanese whiskey, etc. But hidden away in one of the whiskey shops, there was two bottles and you can bring it up now because it did come as a little bit, little bit of a surprise, but it was a bit of cheer, a little bit of ban pachin. Wow. Mm. And there's another bottle there too, Glendalough pachin as well. Now the fact that on the Royal Mile in the Heartland, you know, in what's essentially the enemy area, um, they're they're actually got pachin on sale. I thought I thought it was a bit of a breakthrough. It was a surprise to see it there. And, and the fact that it was there that did, did sort of give me cheer and who knows that it's very limited quantities but it's actually there it's made its presence so it's ranking itself up there even with along the uh along with the, the, the likes of the, it's, it's hit the mainstream then Marty, well then. the fact that it's actually there is is a surprise you know yeah uh, Vic's saying go to Cadenhead's at the bottom of the Royal Mile. It's oh. a great shop. It's a great shop. Yeah. As I had, I, as you can imagine, in fact, I'm I'm on limited time in this. So I only get very little free time, uh, especially whenever the, the shops would be open. So I only can sort of pop my head into some of them. But this was up the top end because it 
people have guests up in, in the castle. And then I stopped off in the Scotch Whiskey Experience, which is just below the Edinburgh Castle. Again, it's owned by Diageo. And what Diageo did was they bought um, the collection from, I can never remember this guy's name. It's Clive Vides, I think that's how it's pronounced, who had been collecting whiskey for 35 years. And they bought the collection. Now, what you get, and you're not allowed to take photographs of it. There are professional photographs of it that they have released, but I don't want to just copy them. They bought 3,384 bottles. And some of these are, I mean, one-offs. I mean, there just isn't any, any other of them. And they have them in these this big room, or these big rooms. And it, honestly, it's got a, a golden glow. They've so well lit up. Um, the guy that took me around, very nice, very nice staff on it, very nice staff. Uh, the guy that took me around, and he says, sometimes just when I've, I'm on a tea break and I know it's quiet, I just go up and stand in the room. He says, just like the ambience of it. And I, I get it, you know, you would understand why it's that sort of amber glow that, that, that just, yeah, chills you out. It makes you feel warm inside, you know. It looks like you should get shortbread and tins in there as well. You probably do. <laughs> well, you see, that, that's the shop downstairs. And there, yep. there's they have the sort of stereotypical um, whiskey stuff. Because, I mean, they're selling to tourists. And if tourists want to buy that kind of thing, that's, that's what you have to supply. Mm -hmm. Now, outside, they always have a greeter outside. And if you stop with them for a little bit and have a chat, they, they're invariably fairly young. So standing up there is a bit bleak. So it's it's... They don't mind having a yarn with you. They're always trying to invite you in, obviously. Yeah. But if you do go in, there's a restaurant downstairs, Amber, which the food is superb, really good whiskey bar in it. And the guys that are there, they, well, they, they know what they're talking about and they, they will um, help you select the whiskey if you're if you're not sure. Prices up the stairs in the bar are very reasonable for where it is. You know, the amount of guests that are coming through Edinburgh Castle, the amount of visitors that Edinburgh Castle gets every year I mean, in over the million, uh, hundreds of thousands. Carrick Fergus Castle should really get that, shouldn't it, really? <laughs> I, I, I can see you standing on the bob selling, selling bottles of Buckfast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I would do it. I would I, do it if it would help, but they, they, they're out of their depth. They're out of their depth. Yes, we know. So, so this is this is really what I've been at, and it's all the whiskey stuff. Um, I was over, again, I was over in McHugh's on, I think it was, I can't even remember what day it was. Uh, Thursday night, and uh, done a wee whiskey package with the the guys on on this tour, and they loved it. I mean, they love they, they loved Belfast. <laughs> There's there was a few very strange things that they saw. <laughs> Didn't put them off like but the things that they saw. Right. Okay. I'll have to tell you off camera because it was. Yes, yeah. Way. I have to tell you off camera because I have to tell you <laughs> something else as well. Thomas Jones is saying hello. If you're watching wherever you are in the world, we'll always give you a mention. Remember, you tell your friends, comment, like, and share it. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Instagram, uh, we're on Anchor or wherever you get your podcast, or just ask your smart speaker <laughs> to play Irish Whiskey Review podcast and we'll mysteriously up. appear. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's so, more or less it. What is it, is it time? Just that, it's just been out and about and having a look around. So, yeah, uh, that's probably now it's the optimum time to bring on the big guy. Well, it, it is, but I have actually found a picture of uh, I found a picture of the actual uh, Robin, Robin Redbreast, uh, which you'll love to see because I'll, I'll show you it if I can before we go to uh, Anthony. Uh, uh, Irish whiskey auctions. Look at this here. Look at that there picture. Aye, ah, that's the one. That's, that's the one in Glasgow. Glasgow. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's just amazing. That is a fabulous piece of art. Just fantastic. That's the one. As you're heading, you're heading down into the the salt market. You just look up on the right, and it's, it's there. It's a beautiful thing. Well, I, I've got to say, Tony Sillett is, is, again, I'm off to bed, too drunk, too tired, <laughs> too old to last anymore. We'll watch you again in the morning. Yes, the best place to watch is on YouTube. And remember to hit subscribe there on YouTube because we're past the 400 mark and we're heading towards the 500 mark. And you may have something nice for somebody when we get to 500. Don't be saying that. Shush. All right. <laughs> Just... We don't want people subscribing and unsubscribing so they get to 500. That's been done before. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Look, Looks like Aaron's work. So it's 20 past the hour. I, I know he'll talk the hind leg off the top. Of <laughs> Three, two, one. You're in the room. You're in the room. Good evening. There he is. No sound. No sound. 
I unmuted him and he muted himself at the same time. <laughs> there you go. You're in the room. I'm Technical oh. difficulties. Can you hear me now? We, we can. can. And, and he's got headphones in as well. Excellent stuff. Yeah. Well, I thought I might. I was competing with you, Marty, because you look very professional there. You know, on your on your OB. Is that what you call it these days? <laughs> out, as, as, outside Glenarm broadcast. OGBs outside Glenarm. <laughs> no, no. How are you, my friend? Are you well? I'm all right. Yeah. I think I'm. I'm beginning to come round. I mean, it's been a. It's been a. A busy week. I mean, uh, between drinking and drinking and drinking, I've done a bit of work. Yeah, I had Katie shout at me a few times. So I mean, yeah, we we we. No, no, that is busy for you. You have um, your auctions went live, but we'll just do that first because you've. I mean, it just gets bigger and bigger. You I mean a, a thousand bottles? I'm sure this this month. Yeah, just just uh, just a thousand and fifty or a thousand and something. I don't know what it is now. It's yeah, yeah. We seem to be holding around now. I mean, last month was a thousand and sixty as well, so yeah, we seem to have found that uh, spot. Yeah, but you individually photograph Photograph. every every single thing, and I mean the sheer amount of work involved in that, and keeping the logistics and keeping everything correct and keeping all the records, and because I mean you know yourself, uh, you swap a label and oh yeah, now it's a disaster. and you've to take the barcode off to take the photograph. So I mean, you've got to be meticulous in, in how you handle them and all that. We yeah. thought there was panic Thursday evening, so we were doing our final check. So Niall was in the room and he's going through and he's making sure that the bottles are all in their place. And we had a bottle missing, and it was oh shit, how? Because we genuinely haven't waylaid, mislaid, wrongly labelled a, a bottle in in the three years we've been in existence and. Mm-hmm. It caused panic because it was a fairly pricey one too, which <laughs> sort of squeaky bum time. Where was it? Where was it, Anthony? It, it had been shipped. It, it had been recorded accidentally in the database because we we document every bottle that comes into the place, and it was actually only one that was passing through. So somebody had shipped it to us, and we were shipping it on. Uh, 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 it, we were looking for it on the shelf, thinking it was there, but it actually had already been shipped. And look, when we when we drilled down into it, we found that we'd paperwork to follow it, but. Uh, I've been, yeah. yeah, squeaky bum time. Because <laughs> what happens there is Anthony's looking around, going, "Which one of you fuckers is working for me?" You know, for a month to pay for. Right, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. Uh, and what, if I suggested that to Katie, she'd be all mad, and you know, there could be a divorce and stuff. You never know. I know yeah. all the all the minor technicalities. Yeah, minor technicalities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what are you drinking tonight, mate? I. Uh, Ivor in um, Tiny Temple sent me up a few um, samples. So he gave me this one, Storehouse Special from The Liberator from Morris down in, in Ah, Curry. yes, and for it, instance. It's, uh, Port and Pete, uh, a malt and grain blend at 46 ABV. Um, tasty. Yeah, tasty stuff, actually. See, I, I, I think that little bit of smoke and stuff at times, yeah. It, yeah, does, yeah. it does does work wonders. I've never... I've tried a few of the the, the the sherry cask peanut ones, and I don't know that they're, they're maybe not just to my taste, but I think whenever you get it in the right balance, like the, the dark silky, just that that bit of peat that comes through on, on it, that, it really works well. See, and 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 you can see talking to a lot of the guys. I mean, even Jarlett there in in the eighteen oh eight, they're mm-hmm. all just adding just a hint. Yeah. Uh, on a young whiskey, it just rounds it a wee bit more. It just softens it. It, it sort of helps overcome the age barrier with it so it's uh yeah it i think it, difference to it. it does it just gives that extra touch of touch of complexity that that works yeah. well you know yeah it, really it just does. softens it around it around. yeah again like i mean i wouldn't be i did i did i hear you say you've got a lag of volume there in your glass mm. yeah i'm not a big lag of volume fan oh 16 oh lovely stuff <sighs> lovely like stuff. licking a dirty ashtray after a night in the beer Oh no, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. I think, I think, I've, I think I've done smoke. that on a few occasions as well. So, <laughs> yeah. three. Hey, this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was just this week. Yeah, there's, yeah. No, there's no smoking in pubs anymore, so Anthony. So, I, but I know what you're. I know what you're saying. I know, oh, it's, no, it, it's like lap song, shoe song, tea. It tastes yeah. like well, I don't know. Yeah. No, as you, as you're falling out the door, they've got the ashtrays outside, and you sort of yeah. as you're sliding down the front <laughs> wall, you're sort of like, ah. yeah, doing about this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, been there many a time, many a time. But uh, yeah, you mentioned there it was three years. So it's a, it's a did you have the birthday cake out this week or last week? Yeah, we we had birthday cake. Um, we sort of did and didn't. 
uh, Tuesday the 12th. So Tuesday just gone was the third anniversary of us going live with our very first auction. <laughs> um, mad. Mad to think it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's bananas. I mean, now anybody who looks at photos, I mean, you look at the, the old Pirel beard and it's a lot greyer and the eyes are a lot sunken and I don't know whether that's a mixture of alcohol and stress or what, but yeah, yeah, it's been it's, a, it's been a mad three years. Yeah, um, you, you never thought it was going to be like this, did you? Not you, know, you know, years, never not thought. Lads, I, <laughs> I, I love it. I, I've actually found, and I, I remind myself, it's, it's at times it's hard. You have to pinch yourself when you're dealing with, you know, like there's, there's an 88 Middleton on there in the auction at the minute. It's 12 grand. We've sold bottles at, at 45,000 euro. Yeah. I mean, my first uh, business plan, which was when I sat and drew this out and, and came up with this brainwave. I mean, we were talking about a hundred bottles in the first auction. If we were adding twenty bottles a month, we were doing well. Yeah. You know, so uh, it was just mad. It was stuck. We didn't know if it was going to work. I mean, again, it was just one of them things. Took a punt and yeah. Thankfully, we, we've we've uh, we've been in, embraced or engaged, and people are uh, 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 buying and selling. So like, yeah. You've had a few competitors into the market since then as well. Ah, yeah, but should I, again, competition sort of healthy in a way. I mean, it does. The thing about it is, if it doesn't keep you on your toes, you know, you, you'll get lazy and lax. Now, saying that, I'm not that type of type of psychopath because I'm just too mm -hmm. belligerent. I think I wouldn't just, you know, I, I just want to work hard at it and make sure it's yeah. right. I and mean, that's always been the plan. So, look, it's. I mean, <laughs> we were competing against before. We were competing against anybody on our own island. We were competing against Scotch whiskey auctions and yeah. and and the whiskey auctioneer and all them as well. I think we we can now hold our own with with the prices that we get for particularly for Irish stuff. I mean, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think the thing about it is that it's horses for courses. You know, there's yeah. different there's different things that, that people like about different sites, and it's, I mean, and the one thing about it is you always know you can't please everybody. Just, just as long as, as long as you have that in your head, you can't please everybody all the time. It's just as simple as that. So if you, if as you long as I'm happy, I don't care about anybody as, else. As long as, as long as you're happy. No. But but the thing is, it is you just have you do what you do well, try and keep it up and try and maintain your standards and yeah, and yeah that's all that, I can do. You know, and, and try and, and have a bit of crack go, to going yeah. along the way. I mean, that's the other side of it. I mean I think everybody's got to know me now at this stage. I'll just do stuff just for the shits and giggles, <laughs> you know, or, or, or I giggle until I shit myself and then something happens, you know. But like, I mean, again, I, that I just, happened twice this week. Yeah, no, <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, after last Friday night, oh. I saw bits and pieces of it. I was, I was, I was working surprisingly. These are break. amateurs, lads. I mean, what do you do on a Saturday night? Was it two hours? Is it? Oh, we do, we only do about an hour. We an try hour? and limit it to an oh, hour because we, we, we've got people. We've got people. We know people can't stand us that much longer. And, 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 and some of the things you're ma you, an Instagram, you're limited maximum to an hour. You see, Anthony. So it's it's nice yeah. to keep it under an hour. You know, but oh. if people are interested, we'll let it run over. You know. Yeah, <laughs> over five hours last week. We <laughs> last Friday night. Yeah. Uh, I I uh, I was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was bananas. Uh, no, you, and and so it. like we had, I don't know if you've seen it. Like we had the resident lunatic from Belfast walking no. around, shaving his head and eating his dinner all at the same time. We've and, seen a bit of it. We've seen a bit of it. Yeah. yeah. No, um, the re there is a, a, a there was a reason for this five hour telethon. That's like one of those things. Remember Michael Aspel or whoever it was used to do these things for everybody. It all banks of people behind them, all answering phone calls or letting on yeah. to you anyway. Um. To raise I had money. that too. It was Katie. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what? What was the purpose of it? Why did we, you do it? So, um, Belfast Whiskey Week, as as you know, was was trying to uh, not trying to successfully uh, promoting a whiskey festival for for Belfast and in Belfast. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, it was all remote this year, but there was festival bottlings. I mean, there was four festival bottlings in total, and uh, there was we had we were given by Paul. Uh, just in a conversation was we've bought a number one of each festival bottle. Yeah. You know, we, we want to try and try and raise as much money for charity. What do we do? And, uh, I mean, I don't know if people know, but we, we do a, a charity item every month in our auctions. Anyhow, 
so because we have that penciled out for a few months ahead and um, we we sort of didn't i didn't see a window where we could slot it in so i said well look let's build an auction on its own and just do the, the 10 items there was it started off the night with 10 items uh 10 items and we'll do a bit of a promo it'll be live for 24 hours we'll then do the last three hours live on you know on streaming on on, on social medias and all that sort of stuff and yeah i thought it'd be a good idea yeah yeah i'll never learn no Oh, well. I would look. Come on. I mean, Listen, how much did you raise? Seven and a half thousand, just under seven and a half thousand euro. I mean, yeah. there we go. That's yeah, good so going. Exactly. Well worth it for Macmillan Cancer Support. So again, a very worthy cause. Very, very, very worthy cause. I uh, they do they do amazing work. I mean, the, uh, yeah, I've seen it firsthand, and yeah. they do absolutely amazing work. And, and and I think that's the thing that maybe helps when you've got a cause like that as well, because people there's very few people in society these days that that haven't been touched somewhere along the absolutely. line by cancer absolutely uh, by, by a family or a friend or something like that so mm -hmm. when, when an opportunity comes up with that and you get to drink whiskey and yeah. insult people and well actually that's just me insulting <laughs> yes. people and uh, uh i mean like we were auctioning you know the clothes off people's back during the auction <laughs> it was just bananas so I think we're going to do that now. Everybody says we should do that at the end of every auction now, every monthly auction. Anthony gets tanked, yeah. absolutely juiced up, and let <laughs> that, fly. That's, that's what we yeah. do. See, see how much we can raise by getting yeah, Anthony yeah, yeah, blocked yeah. on that's camera. What, that's <laughs> for the Anthony Retirement Fund, but that's the only thing. That's, you know, that's... Right. Well, well, listen. A couple of a couple of great uh, questions have come in here. Keith McCann sent such a an age crack last Friday uh, at the at the. Uh, charity auction but uh, trevor watson has asked you anthony he says he says over the three years what's the best whiskey that you've sold so there's maybe two or three answers to that so do your best uh, again as touched on justin it's all subjective i mean you know what's the best i mean mm. again when we sold the the first silent distillery in march 2020 that had set a world record for the single most expensive bottle of Irish whiskey at 40, 42, 45,000 euro. So, you know, that's, that's a, that's a hell of a thing to have achieved. Um, believe it or not, a lot of them have been the personal stories attached to them. Um, there's one guy in particular, I know he won't mind me repeating this, but he, he had, he made a decision to change his life. Um, he had a huge whiskey collection and he had lost a huge amount of weight. Um, and he needed to get surgery uh, afterwards just to tidy up skin and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And he sold his whiskey collection. He sold some of his whiskey collection to free up funds. And every time he sees me now, he's thanking me. And I mean, we only wow. met him a couple of weeks ago. And you sort of go, that's mad stuff. I mean, that is mad. The reasons behind things yeah. is mad. That is mad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's the thing, too, that I mean, I sometimes get... I have to be muzzled more than people probably are aware uh, because um, I, I sometimes, when, when people are on social media and they're giving out about people selling bottles or this, that, and that, nobody knows anybody else's circumstances. I mean, yeah, that's right. you know, you're selling a bottle of whiskey, you bought it with the best of intentions, but all of a sudden it's worth 200, 300, 400 euros. You have a mortgage repayment coming up. You've The, the kid needs braces. You have a hospital bill, whatever. Sell it. Don't you pay yeah, for the yeah. bottle? You do whatever the hell you want with it. Yeah. You, you know, you're... it's exactly the same as whenever people say, "Oh, you shouldn't do this with whiskey." If you see if you buy it, do whatever you want with yeah. it. It's entirely yeah. up yourself. You want to stick... snorting it through your eyeball is not good for you, but that's the only probably thing. not. But yeah. if you want to stick iron brew in it and 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 a we one of them wee umbrellas like Justin puts in his <laughs> yeah, feel free. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you bought. Do you want with it? But I mean, everybody gives off about flippers and people doing this. I get it. I understand why that annoys people. But if they get in there, they get in there. And the I don't know. One, I don't know another what... one that was sold, uh, um, these people had this bottle of whiskey uh, under the kitchen sink. It was an 88 Middleton, believe it or not, and had it under the kitchen sink. Didn't know what it was. They yeah. had no idea. Um, <laughs> when they initially phoned me and I sort of said, you know you've got a fairly special bottle, I don't think they believed. And they, they actually, they were from down the country. They drove up to the dock wanted to see was this lunatic working out of his garden shed and you know with a tinfoil hat on going oh i'll give you ten thousand euro and uh 
they just they arrived and they sort of you know it, it gave them a bit of confidence then as well but yeah. when we sold it on the night on the sunday night she phoned me crying going is that real and you know, it sold for twelve thousand. and she was like is that real is that real oh no you're joking stop my ass so again you know that's, it's, that's it, it, it was it's like winning the tom ball and winning lines was it yeah. for them yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But, i mean i mean as i mean that's a life-changing sum of money for a lot of people yeah, yeah. and yeah. yeah i mean i was i was trying to explain to a guy who's on this tour that i'm on about about why People are collecting whiskies and why it's become more of a thing. People don't get interest rates anymore. No. So if you have negative. any savings, it's negative interest rates. You're losing just money. Over, of ain't over a million, Justin. So Justin to be under, ain't over a million right. it's negative interest rates now. So I mean, well, listen, that Justin, Justin's lost a fortune. Bitcoins yeah, up and yeah, down, up and money. down, and <laughs> all, uh, all these, all these assets is all over the place. But people are buying stuff that they want to collect that will be worth more money in the future, or hopefully as an investment. Um, and that's one of the only ways people can actually make a few quid, and it's uh, it's accessible for everybody. Well, hey, what, 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 tell me this: What's this about? Is this about the Fabergé egg that was unbelievably expensive? Robert Gustav and saying I'll probably put my Fabergé egg <laughs> up for auction. Got it in Belfast in July. Oh, obviously, <laughs> Robert got that because um, he's a world class influencer, <laughs> and he was given one uh, <laughs> as payment uh, for his. Uh, his fantastic video video uh, highlight reel. <laughs> so, uh, all, all, all joking aside, all joking aside, we've been asked a serious question. <laughs> to make a change. No, it is. Darren <laughs> Barney Milligan has asked, will Anthony take the new £100 high street vouchers? I would I would say you probably could take the high street vouchers, couldn't you? This is this is a scheme in the north. I know, yeah. I was going to say I doubt it very much because, well, I could trade them for butter vouchers or something like that. Maybe. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe you know, gone were the days. Uh, <laughs> no, I, can't imagine. I could go down to I could go down to one of the off licenses just across the border and get myself fueled up. All right, I suppose that'd be it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know whether they work outside of the UK. Those particular cards or not, but uh, I'm not. I'm not 100 convinced they're going to work anywhere yeah. inside the UK. <laughs> no, no. Listen, I know somebody has one. I know somebody has theirs in their wallet. It's yeah, but not what what is, it? is it not supposed to be spending it? Is that not kind of the well, purpose yeah, of the whole the thing? thing? He showed me it. I couldn't believe it because I haven't. I've, I haven't had had hiding or hair. My I actually tried to apply for my COVID passport. And I put in my passport, my driver's license, and my birth certificate, and it still hasn't bounced back yet. And even if I do get it, uh, it's in another two weeks to apply for the thing. And it, it's only valid for travel before the 1st of uh, December. So I, I don't have much faith in them, in them mm. myself. But there no, you go. I, I tell you what, you see, even this high, high street voucher comes out, everybody got £100. Wait till you see how much it cost to do the administration to get it all put out. Because yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, it'll cost about £120 a card. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it'll cost well. a fortune. It's and a there's, been, there's been 15, 59 civil servants transferred from the Department <laughs> of Health over to this. So they're, they're actually not. Yes. Open. Yeah, something like that Absolutely. there's Absolutely. Mark Kerr said he spent his within 30 minutes of getting it a lot of people I know are going to buy uh, new shoes with their, their voucher I've got my eye on a, on a pair of shoes as well you can get four pairs of Dykeman shoes for 100 quid wow I thought do you not only wear Manola Blank and Blanics or you know no, 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 like I, that, no? I, no, I, I don't. I don't. People, people never see my feet because I could have no clothes on below me. Because you, you're like, like actually think I'm no clothes on. I can't believe you're, you're like Trevor suggesting that. We're all sitting here picturing them naked, sitting on the naked. <laughs> oh God! Oh dear yeah. God! Right, give me a drink. Give me something stronger. <laughs> don't be saying that because we got banned one time because of nudity. Oh yeah, nudity. Yeah, don't be mentioning it. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Richard McEwen says, "I think it only works in Northern Ireland terminals." So there you go. It only works in Northern Ireland terminals. Oh, but, right. uh, you, I don't know whether you could buy whiskey for. I know when they have the little card in Australia that you're on social security in Australia, you can't buy cigarettes or alcohol with the wee card in Australia. So they probably can set it to that setting, but 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 they probably forgot to, to set it to the setting not to buy fuel. <laughs> yeah, going down. Have they said? You know the way in in down here they've stopped with your Tesco card and your 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 savings cards that you can't get alcohol. 
or, or when you buy ah, out, yes. it doesn't doesn't contribute yep. to it now as well. Ah, that doesn't the same with you guys as well. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't have them because I don't want Tesco spying on everything I eat. Oh no! I intentionally, <laughs> I intentionally scan my card and other people's groceries, <laughs> so as people think I have cats and dogs and children as well. No, I do honestly. I do. I get you extra club card vouchers because there's a lot of people don't want the extra money, so I scan other people's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got one of the. He's going to get one of those restraining orders for Sainsbury's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not living within 20, 20 yards of the terminal in Sainsbury's. I, I heard. You, I want to ask you a question, uh, Marty. I heard you talking about the 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 mile in in um, Edinburgh. Yeah. What? Where? Where's our golden mile? Where's our? Uh, you know. Where, where's our? Where's our venues like the 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 whiskey experience or anything like that? Well, the only thing is, well, know, can you talk about I, it? Because you know, you know something. Are you allowed to talk about that? Yeah, money, well, are you? I am. But, um, I don't think it's much of a secret that Wally Jack is going to be investing some money in building something out in Belfast. Now, no, knowing Wally, it could be anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he has. I mean, the collection, the collections of stuff that the man has is just incredible. So if he decides to bring them all into one, it will be. It'll be a hell of a thing. The, the Irish Whiskey Museum in Dublin, Dublin is still, as far as I'm aware, still closed. Yeah. I was down there on at the start of the week, Monday and Tuesday, and it was closed. I've done it, and I will. I've, I talked about it after I done it, and it's truly awful. I mean, it's beyond. It's beyond awful. I, I'll, I'll give you an idea of some of the stuff. I I sat through it just thinking. What is this? What are they talking about? But maybe you know more about whiskey than the average punter does. I'll, I'll tell you one little thing. That, that doesn't excuse bullshit. They, right. I mean, yeah, this, I is, this, is, this has built yeah. itself as a museum, and this is one of the facts that they come out with. Back in the day, uh, when they got a cask of whiskey, what happened was the first third that people drank, it killed them. Oh. And the second third after that sort of made them blind. But what they realised was that the last of it was really, really good. Now, I'm not an economist, Anthony, as you'll appreciate, but you see if you kill a third <laughs> of your customers and then you blind a further third, I'm going to say you're going to struggle to get the last third to retain their, their custom. <laughs> unless, you're say, an, unless you're an arms dealer. Unless you're an arms dealer. <laughs> honestly, that was... And I'm sitting there going, what the hell? They have a, they have a thing like a wake, okay, like a coffin laid out. They talk about oh they come in and everybody used to have a party and a sing song and everybody got pissed at the wakes, and the wee girl that was doing the thing she jumped up and sat on top of the coffin like this and I'm thinking I've been to many a wake, but I've never seen that yeah I've never seen anybody jump and sit on top of the dead body <laughs> that would be taking it a little bit far and I've been at many a wake where I've ended up three seats to the wind absolutely no problem, but it just I mean they actually said. We have pictures up here of people in Irish whiskey that have been very important. So they had George Rowe, they had uh, Eliza Jane Corrigan from, from Bush Mills. And then she said, we don't have the original John Jameson up there because he was Scottish and we don't want him. <laughs> I swear to God. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is billing itself as a museum. People are paying money for this. Yeah. When we got to the tasting, the wee girl goes, she's nosing away at it. Yes. And she says... On the back of the bottle, it says green peppers. How would you ever get green peppers in a, in a whiskey? I started nosing it again. Now, no offence to you, dear. No offence to you. But you see the guy who wrote those tasting notes? He's forgot more about whiskey than you'll ever know. <laughs> so if he says it's green peppers, I'm going with a bottle over someone that tells me they don't want John Jameson up because he was Scottish. He's Scottish. You know. uh, look, uh, again, I, as I say, I think... We're, we're perhaps on the cusp of something, and particularly Northern Ireland, we're on the cusp of something real special. I mean, again, when you think about it, if we can get the amount of tourists back into, into Northern Ireland. We need to. Ireland, we need yeah. to. Yeah. Um, it'll be all the new distilleries, hell of a thing. Map yeah. it all out, you know. But I, I think they're, they're sort of, I'm not saying everybody needs to be singing, sitting around singing, come by, yeah, but. I think no. there needs to be a bit of a, a, a an orchestrated plan. I, I think, think there, pro, I think there was there was things heading that way, um, and then COVID hit, and I mean COVID's just devastated everything. So mm -hmm. it's hardly planned for what you're going to do with tourists when there is no tourists. 
Yeah. It's maybe a good time to actually start thinking about things. The but... whiskey trail is definitely, it's definitely, it needs to happen. Well, the Irish Whiskey Association has come out with the passports, which I think is a pretty good thing. I mean, it's worked as a sort of tourist uh, gimmick with the likes of the Game of Thrones doors and all that kind of stuff has worked quite well. Um, so I think that's a way of going. But I think in terms of dedicated whiskey experiences and that kind of stuff, I do one. I, a couple of people have asked me about this. I, I sell business to business. And I had a lot of work planned for, for last year. It all got cancelled because it's very hard to run something that you're going to do, dedicate it every single day all through the summer because you have to make that commitment. And you have to be there. If nobody turns up, you still have to be there. Mm -hmm. And if you sell one ticket, you have to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, so are you going to drive? Am I going to drive from Glenarm to Belfast to make myself a tenner? Because it's cost me far more than that in payroll. So, if you sell business to business, they get you the customers and bring them to you. But um, unless you have the backing to get that up and running, it's kind of hard. But you have all the all the right ingredients there. But once it does come back, oh, yeah. no reason in the world. I mean, Belfast, as you know, it's not a big city, and there's lots and lots of avenues and places that you can get. No, and I'm again. There. I'll, I'll I'll shout the Dublin card as well. I mean, you've got when you think you've got Rowan Co, Pierce, DLD, mm -hmm. Teeling, all there beside each other. It's a great, you know, yeah. within walking distance of each other. I mean, it gives you enough time to sober up a bit before you get to the next one. So you know, it's 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 a, it's a great experience. I, I do I do think the Pierce Lions Distillery tour, the the distillery itself is just drop dead gorgeous. It's oh, stunning. beautiful. Yeah, it's stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And the, the guys in it are, are superb. And there's a few little touches in it that you think that whether that was done by accident or design, it's just it's it's really, really class. Really, really class. Yeah. You know then you've got places I mean Hinch um is just phenomenal down the north. I mean the aesthetics of it is just fantastic, you know. Well if that, I mean if, if you ever go and do go down and see the guys down at Dunville's some of the just it always seems to be a wee I bit don't want to go down there. Down there. They're like still them. shut, they're still shut, but yeah, aren't they? yeah they still are. Shut. But I mean, you have I've been there, done the tour a couple of times now, and it is it's, the way it's set up. They're always seem to be adding a little bit more to it, a little bit. This is changing a little bit, it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger over a longer period of time. And you and I both know Dunville's certainly in the secondary market doesn't do that well. No. But as those bottles get drunk more and more, and people realise, oh my lord, that is just amazing stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if they don't start buying them now, don't complain in five years' time when they're worth an absolute fortune. Yeah, he, I, 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 I I've said it out loud, and I think Charlotte is probably one of my favourite people in the whiskey community because yeah. of how generous he is, and how 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 much knowledge he has, and how. He, he doesn't, it's not about, you know, how big, good they are. It's about how good the whole thing is and, and, yep. and picking up other brands and all that sort of stuff. But he gave me a sample of that, um, the 20-year-old that was done for James Fox's. It's ridiculously good. <laughs> it is ridiculous. I mean, I, 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 yeah. I, it's just ridiculous. It's ridic I, I bought a bottle. Now, he saved me. Again, in my drunken wisdom the other night he mentioned that uh, he said oh it's probably one of our best and i reached behind me onto the shelf in in uh, in my office i was grabbing the bottle of i was going to open it go, no 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 Anthony, i think you've had enough don't drink it now it'd be right. a bit of a waste well, I, I, funny i was in jim folks the other day um I'll, I'll bring this up as a picture because i saw this and i thought to myself I can't not buy this. I'm actually back working again, so I, 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 might, I might have a few oh, quid. Don't ask me to go and get the bottle. Don't ask me to go and get the bottle. No, I have a picture over here. All it right. was sitting there, and I kind of here thought to myself, I, I have to sort of buy this. There's a bottle of oh, cool Raid, right? Yeah. right? But you see at the bottom of it? 757 mil. Mm -hmm. oh. that, that is a bottle of cool Raid just after the Coal Rain Distillery closed. That's from the early 70s when Bush Mills took over Coal Rain. Now, I, I saw it, and I had, I had been talking to young Carl from the Whiskey Companion, and we were saying about the guy who paid 
was it forty five pound or something for a bottle of the cool range you can buy in Tesco's for like fourteen quid, <laughs> and it said on it, slight tear to the front and back label. <laughs> so, but I saw that and I thought, there can't be many of them about. Can't be many of those. So bottles. Will that be a next month auction? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, no, you're that'll be one of, up there going. You know? <laughs> that'll be one of the ones that I'll hang on to for a while. But it's stuff like this that I like. I, I mean, it's from up near where I live. It's kind of a little bit off color. It wasn't. I mean, it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't anyway near as expensive as I thought it probably could be because there's not too many of those floating about. But I walked. I walked in with other purposes. I walked in to see about something, and I walked out. I walked down to try and make a few quid and walked down with the down money. You, you, look, you weren't looking to buy their silent distillery too that was there on the shelf, was it? No, no. Are you sure? I, I, thought I, was, I was just taking it out for Justin. That's yeah. the one. <laughs> it, Justin's going to get me a, a Christmas present, you know, so I just have, I have to go and check these things out, you know. I, I'm a man. I don't do Christmas presents. <laughs> uh, Thomas Joan has asked a question. What do you guys think of the Tullamore Dew Caribbean cask whiskey and is it worth the money? Everybody's doing these uh, Caribbean casts uh, editions, aren't they? I, I, I'll I, give you my verdict on them, uh, on, Car- on Tullamore Dew. I really like Tullamore Dew. I like the light, I like that estuary green thing that they do. And I always think it should really take cask better than it does. I'm not a big fan of the Caribbean cask. I'm not a massive fan. I thought I would be a massive fan of the cider cask. I'm not a big fan of that either. I just don't think... I think it should take the cast better than it does. It was always a bit of a disappointment. Um, they're bringing out a wine cask finish, or they might have a have it out. The wine yeah, cask. It's, out. It's, in, it's in Dublin Airport. We were at the yeah. launch there of it two or three weeks ago. Uh, well, that one they did. They do. A, they did a special in the old visitor experience, which was uh, Californian red wine finish, and that's the. I think it's probably the best of the sort of speciality cask finishes. Um, so yeah, are they I'll... looking big money for those, Anthony? Or, or are they the new one? Uh, I think it's seventy five or something, seventy two. It's a Pomerol mm-hmm. uh, finished in a Pomerol cask from from just outside Bordeaux. Uh, yeah. It's really, really fruit forward. It's really, I yeah. mean, it's Boston with fruit with the Pomerol in it. Um, would I? I'd probably buy it. Would I buy it a second time? I mm, don't know. Um, yeah. There's been a few. I think Tullamore suffers from an issue of its ABVs are usually too low. I think it just needs that wee bit more mm. of a, a, a bite at the top end. Would probably Because I think that's one of the reasons why the Tullamore Dew Phoenix, you know the one yeah. that was at 55? I think that's why people love that. Yeah, it just has that wee bit of a fight to it. Um, yeah. The Caribbean cask is fantastic for cocktails. Um, yes, yes. When we yes. were down there, we it was uh, we were in Tullamore Dew and they they lashed us with uh, cocktails made with it, and yeah, yeah. it really works. Then I I, I could get that, but uh, in, yeah. in terms of what the what the cask brings to to Tullamore, because it's that light and nice estuary um, yeah. apple and, and sort of. Uh, Alec, Alexander Shagay is saying uh, 70 quid uh, EU, 50 ish for non EU travel. Yeah. He likes the Pomeroy one. He's saying he agrees with you. The Pomeroy one is excellent. Uh, he's saying it's superb. And he also posed a question there. Uh, he says, uh, he says, well, we had James Fox on in Dingle for the Irish Whiskey Society Ambassadors tasting. It was great indeed. So he's he's agreeing <laughs> with you. We must be doing something right if all the the viewers are agreeing with us. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was probably reading their notes beforehand and just saying that so they're agreeing with us. <laughs> no, it's not as if I know what I'm on about. Trust me, I'm in Egypt. No, 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 no. no. After, do you know what I'm after drinking there now? The Red Breast, twenty six year olds from the Temple Bar. Uh, that's phenomenal whiskey. I have never tried it. I haven't tried it. I haven't got it yet. I'll sell you a bottle of it. Right. <laughs> I think he's talking to you there, Justin. <laughs> Are you said you're back working. I mean, we, we we're going to skin you live now. I know. I know. I'll get back. But I'm working, but I'm not working that hard. <laughs> yeah. Um so I mean we 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 wanna as I say, I just wanted to sort of come on with you this evening and talk about I think the, the charity event. That we done mm-hmm. last week. I just wanted to thank everybody. I mean, again, at the end of the night, I was probably too blotted to say <laughs> have too much coherence, but uh, it was it was phenomenal. I mean, again, it just shows. I I think the whiskey community, and uh, I, I'll reference you guys because you know you've you've lived the north, you've you've lived that life. 
you fill a room in Belfast with whiskey fans, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference whether they're black, white, nobody you know, cares. what nobody gives a shit. No, it's no. it's something we've a shared common interest and shared common love. You might call each other regents for some of the tasting notes, but I mean that's all part of the crack. As exactly, <laughs> exactly, you can't agree. Nobody, you don't agree with everybody, but um, there are some things I I hear people going, "Oh, that's lovely, that's that's phenomenal, that's great," so, and I'm like. It's not brilliant, you know. I, I, are you? I'll, I'll ask a question again. This will swing it, swing it round on you. How do you find the price point again? You're over there in Scotland now. You're walking around. You walk into Caden Head Shop. You see a, a twenty year old for eighty, ninety pounds sterling. Mm. You come home here and you see a, 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 a three, four year old new make, and it's eighty euros. You go, yeah, this is a bugbear for Marty, isn't it? Really? Yeah, I, I saw a guy talking one time about the ten year old. Uh, red breast that come out, and they're saying, "Oh, it's a, it was a hundred pound," and oh, that's that's not a bad price. You go and tell a Scottish man that he has to pay a hundred pound for a for a ten year old bottle of whiskey; he'll hit you with a bottle. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, I understand totally why they're doing this because secondary markets and stuff and all you know. But whenever people are talking about, oh, it's 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 a, a very affordable whiskey and it's 70, 80 pounds. That's not an affordable whiskey for a lot of your common or garden guys. It just isn't. Um, I I spend a, quite a lot of money on whiskey because one, I collect it, and two, I I, I, I I treat it as a as a as an experience, and I don't tend I don't tend to do. If you saw the car I drive and you see the one Justin drives, you'll understand why I spend so much money on whiskey. <laughs> but but that's it. I mean, it's a it's a kind of a different thing for me, but. Whenever I hear people saying a hundred year pound is is very reasonable for a ten for a ten year old whiskey, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's it's that's expensive. It's expensive enough. We I, I think part of it too. I mean, you're after hitting something there. I I, I had a, a conversation during the week about it. Do you think that the brands are now having an eye on the secondary market and going? <laughs> you know, absolutely. But do you think it? it, it I, I, I and I, not. You think that that small minded to think that that I mean when they're thinking most of the brands now are thinking internationally. Did are, are they going? Well, they'll pay an extra tenner in Ireland. Do we get it? I think. I, 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 why wouldn't they? Why on <laughs> earth? Would, why on earth would they not? If they look at it and think to themselves, "I'm selling this at a hundred pound," it goes to auction the day after we sell it, and people are quite prepared to pay one fifty, one sixty, two hundred for it. Why, why would we not charge one hundred and twenty pound? Because they're still going, it's probably still going to be elevated in uh, as a sort of pro rata amount, and uh, and there you go. You know, it's it's that it's that level of. I, I think like Alexandra has a point there actually on on that is that when we get to a stage where a lot of the new distilleries, so when we've yeah. got forty distilleries with their own stock in the market, I mean, look at Dingle, you know, again the single malt batches. We're mm -hmm. up on seventy euros now. The core range is at fifty-five euros. It's come yeah. down. I mean, so there's, um, there there is that of it that when they get to a a point where they're stabilised, they have a constant flow now of stock coming through. They're not buying the secondary market. I mean, secondary market, uh, not secondary market, as in casks, wholesale casks. Yeah, are off the scale price mm -hmm. at the minute. Yeah. Um, so but, that's, that's I mean, but there's there's still stuff I think is, is very good value for money. I mean, me and you've talked before about uh, writer's tears. Oh I mean, yeah. yeah. How why people are not buying these now? Because they mm. they tick all the boxes. Yeah. The one thing possibly the design of it, but it's, you can argue that it's maybe a bit in between. It's maybe not outlandish enough to be artsy, if you like, and it's not traditional enough. It sort of sets in between. It looks okay, but in terms of yeah, but whiskey, it's at, at its it initial okay. retail price, I mean, it's not it's not offensive. So I, no. I, you don't want it. I mean, if they if they charge you an extra 10, 20 quid and put it in a fancier box, you'd sort of be a bit miffed about it. So I think it's it, it, it's all right as it is. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, it's it's an annual release, very limited, great whiskey. I mean, a very very good whiskey, and it's affordable. I mean, there's no yeah. nobody on any sort of income that couldn't afford to pay. What it has released that every year, um, it's it's funny. The the single the um single releases of your, your Middletons, 
you know, if you're going to buy a Middleton collection, your single cask mm -hmm. stuff that you get uh, from the Maison de Whiskey or some of these here, and you're picking, you can still pick those up for probably what three, four hundred, roughly, maybe a wee bit more yeah. than that. Yeah. And yet, the, the yeah, sort of the very rare ones. Bushmills, look at the Bushmills, thirty-two year old for Le Maison de Whiskey, nine hundred and sixty yeah. euros for 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 what it is. I mean, thirty-two mm -hmm. year old on the front of it, whereas twenty-eight year old. Uh, um, Red breast. Uh, red breast is 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 two grand. I mean, again, yeah. it's and and I know you're 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 not you can slightly compare an apples and oranges in in, uh, yeah, in but, what they are as a, as a whiskey. But I mean, again, just initial price point. It's it's a different animal. Yeah, as I say, I mean another um, another thing that I probably I I've heard on about this many a time here. I see. Very rarely you see a 40-year-old Irish whiskey pop up. And it doesn't do, you know, it makes a reasonable amount of money. But 40-year-old yeah. Scotches are making that. And there's thousands upon thousands of balls of that. 40-year-old yeah. Irish, would there be a thousand balls of it in the world? No, 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 wouldn't. No. Uh, so, in total, Keith, Keith McCann thinks we're in a bubble and that the industry could price itself out of the market. Are we in a bubble, says Keith? Um, I'm going to say no, but we could be... Okay. We could be on the cusp of something a little bit overreaching. Uh, I don't think it's a, a big enough bubble that is going to affect the industry in any serious way. But I think the single cask releases coming so often, it's forced people to start going, right, well, we'll just collect this. We can't afford to go, oh, we'll buy that and that and that and that, because it's, it's, it's too many that come. Hang on. Well, you see, again, I have to be... <laughs> <laughs> I try to be diplomatic in this, which is unusual for me. I mean, they're not Pokemon. You don't have to collect them all. But this is it. This is I, it. I've been famously quoted as saying that, and I, I actually think I went, they're not fucking Pokemon. You don't have I to hate Pokemon, them all. by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you don't have to collect them all. This, this mentality of that people get, I mean, that you have to get full sets. When I, when I put on my business hat and I say that mm -hmm. when people come to me and say, I've got a full collection of whatever it is, I, I'll usually turn around to them and I, I would say it's 10 times out of 10, I will say to them, you will get more value, you will get more money selling them as individual bottles. Yeah. So they worked hard and they've busted a gut. And a lot of people have said, oh, it's just a crack of collecting a collection. But if you're doing mm. it, if, you're, if your mindset is that you're doing it for the collection, as in it's going to be worth money, yeah. You look at the Scotch, I mean, there's very few Scotch collections yeah. that have been worth money it's usually individual bottles that are the the trendsetters and the real high price yeah but when the, the, the when it moves down the the whiskey industry moves on in five years time i've I mean, I say this all the time what will give it the legs is the new dingle um blend that's released you know the the, the core ranges all the stuff that they'll be bringing out because that's that's ultimately where the longevity is and it has to be um Alexandru brought up about uh, you being a, a tealings geek. Tealings, some of the tealings whiskies are superb. The problem tealing have is a little bit is there's too much of it. There's all these different casks, and and it's it's kind of hard to get, you know, with all these different cask finishes. And sometimes it's hard for people to go, ah, well, what one is the the core range? What is the the, the core range? And I think that they suffer a little bit from that. Yeah, I I, I think. I, I'll, I'll actually even go I'll be namely more outspoken on something. I think tailings and possibly for a column now nearly suffer a hangover of Cooley. I think Cooley are deemed as a uh, people deem them as a, as a cheaper brand or as the, as a second rate uh, I, I don't know, a second rate distillery it seems to be because I, I never quite get why people don't hold things like the Chirconnell's why they don't hold them in higher esteem. The Connemara's, I mean, what Connemara did when it came out, people should be ranting and raving about it. But uh, I'd be honest, everything I think Dr. John Teeling did back in the day, the man should be held up as the saviour of Irish whiskey, absolutely. if I'm totally honest. Yeah. And I don't think he ever really gets the credit he deserves. No. Because without him, all of this, is it a bubble, is it too much? Is it, it wouldn't be happening, there wouldn't be any. If I'm, if I'm totally honest, it just no. it certainly wouldn't be the shape it is now without no. him. Um, and Cooley, well, there's lots of very good whiskey out there that comes from Cooley. 
just yeah. doesn't say that it comes from Kelly, but yeah, we know yeah. it does. But that and that's the thing, isn't it? Most of the stuff that everybody's ranting and raving about now is X stock from Curly or X stock from Bushmills. And again, yeah. they, they just they don't get that uh, the love that they should get. And as I say, I think as a side effect, I think tealings, the likes of the 30-year-old tealings or the 33-year-old tealings, people look at it and they go, ah, do you know what? It's not. Whereas if that was a 30-year-old Middleton or a 33-year-old Middleton, it'd be in the multiples of what it is, you know. Whereas, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think there is that. Uh, it's just people collect what they want to collect, you know. Steve, um, Steve Stephen Quinn there saying uh, he was picking up a gun for a twenty-five-year-old for a hundred quid. Irish whiskey is pricing itself out of the market. Uh, at twenty-five yeah. quid, that's at a hundred quid. That's some some whiskey, isn't it? Uh, I've opened another beer here, by the way. Hoppiness, hoppiness. <laughs> <laughs> you can't know it by something. Like that. I yeah. love a good gimmick. You know all that's always a bit cheesy. I love it. The happy days. It's a, it's a Here's a good Brazilian biggest unlocked this. Don't don't don't. don't you keep the myth alive there, at Loch Ness. Uh, Darren Barney Milligan is saying, do you think difficulties in pricing of shipping, especially with shipping of cash, i.e., US to UK, will put will keep putting the prices up? Well, that's the empty cast he's talking about. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, put it like this. When you have to remember the size of some of the distilleries in, in the US, um, MGP, you know, the, 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 the amount of rye whiskey and stuff that they're churning out is just phenomenal. I mean, it's absolutely enormous. Um, Buffalo Trace, I think, have built a new. Extension of just and it's a millions of pounds. I mean, it's not even like ten million. It's it's multiple yeah, hundreds, of, yeah, yeah. hundreds of millions of pounds yeah, extra. There's now two thousand distilleries in uh, the US. There's going to be lots of casks. Really, you know? I, 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 I heard I heard a thousand there recently enough. Somebody said to me, "There's over a thousand and I went, "Holy shit! What? One hundred and forty-four in Scotland. We're at forty-one now in Ireland." Well, put it like this, there's more whiskey distilleries in New York State, or it might not be now, there might be just a, a couple of difference on it, but there's more whiskey distilleries in New York State than there is in Ireland. Or or thereabouts. It's very yeah. comparable, put it like that. And that's just New but York State. Again, they, they've got to do something with their barrels. I, I So one of the things that we were talking about the other day was when we were saying about the, the price point of initial on retail for for whiskies irish whiskies mm -hmm. middleton very rare has recently gone up to 200 uh, euros as their uh, recommended retail price so they've had add, added 20 quid on it yeah surely at the scale that idl is at and and the world presence that they have their cost price hasn't increased by that no, of course it hasn't of so, it hasn't. so the shipping difficulties and all that sort of stuff is irrelevant to a behemoth like them. You can understand it to somebody like Brandon or, or yeah, Michael and Boylock or somebody absolutely. like that, where they're buying ones and twos and fives and mm -hmm. tens. But yeah. I mean, 3,000 casks a day are filled in Middleton. Yeah. I mean, I, funny, I was in Pit Lockery last night and I was telling some of the guys that were there, Ed, Edredur's up there, and Edredur have, have basically built another distillery to double production. Yeah. So it's now up to six casks a week. Yeah. <laughs> I th no, I think it's six casks a day, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a tiny little amount. So they they struggle from all that kind of thing. IDL, IDL's not going to struggle. I mean, if if they have if ever have any problems, they just phone. Hello, Perno. Is there any chance mm -hmm. you could give us an idea? And mm -hmm. I mean, Diageo's. I I'd love to see one of the big guys doing a pot chain. You know, a decent proper pot chain for for markets and taking that along as well as the, as the Irish whiskey. You know? Would it have the uniqueness? Would it have the attraction? I mean, you look at when Hackler came out when they tried it years ago. I know the market probably wasn't ready mm. for when Diageo tried Hackler uh, so, so long ago. I mean, the, the market wasn't ready. Do you think it would diminish think, the uh, appetite for it now? Well, I was in St Andrews today and I was in one of the, the, the spirit shops because anytime, the, the, whenever the guests were walking about and getting about free time, I always go for a little nosy and I was in. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I've been all over the bloody place in the last two weeks. But you walked in and there was a guy training a girl. She was obviously just a new start. And he was explaining to her, well, over here we've got the the uh, Irish gins 
down here we've got Irish whiskies. Up there we've got the the tequilas and mezcals. Uh, these the kid, and he's going through it all. Now this is in Scotland, remember, the home of Scotch, and up there they're probably selling more to tourists than they are to locals. And yet now they're bringing in new spirits. They're bringing in um, uh, tequilas, your añejo tequilas, and your reposado tequilas, and you know your mezcals, your mezcals, and things that probably most people haven't heard of. Vodkas, they're, they're, I heard them actually say vodkas, a fraction of what they used to be. People aren't buying vodka anymore. They're buying all these new spirits. So why would I understand Brendan um, and Cologne? They're 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 Pochin's fantastic, but to be fair, Brendan couldn't make any massive dent in the American market. He just doesn't have the capacity. Yeah. Whereas if you take someone like. IDL or take someone like Diageo, you actually pick up essentially a, a PGA product and do it well and do it justice. They can just bring the brand awareness, the whole putting awareness to it, and everybody piggyback on the back of it. And I don't see why that that would ever really be a problem. You could use their their micro distillery down there to do. It. <laughs> it's, it's what I, I heard a mad statistic the other day. It's either the fourth or the fifth biggest distillery in Ireland. Their micro distillery. Yeah, except, but this is it. I mean, they're in a different scale. You know, yeah. these guys are, and they as you turn around and open Rowan Co. I laughed at that. It was like, talking about oh, scale. We need a distillery. We just threw, was it 35 million or something? They threw at it. At it open, like six months. months. Money, money, we're ready to go build a distillery. <laughs> <laughs> Talk, talking about scale, Alexandri says the craft movement in the States means anybody with a pot and a contensor can call yeah. themselves a distillery. So obviously some of them aren't that big, Marty. You know, oh, no, I've, they don't necessarily... I've seen them in Michael Portello. They're quite small. There's lots of them are very small, but they would be certainly in comparison, a comparable size to, to the likes of what Brendan would be doing or, or yes. Braylock or whatever. So you can write them off if you like, but they're still bringing out whiskey. They're still bringing out a, a, a product. And whenever you consider <laughs> the game GP, uh, I mean, the amount of stuff, I mean, is it 12, 12 stories or something that's over? And yeah. They're just pumping stuff out. Yeah. I mean, got hundreds of hundreds of thousands a week. You know, so all of this, people we, are... We've got a spirit. long way to go. I think that's the thing. I think I, that's I, huge I, way. I, I, again, people, and, and back to Keith's point about are we in a bubble? I mean, I don't think so. When, when a company like IDL is... Is putting the investment into the 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 bonding warehouses that they're building in Dungarmine and that the new stills that were replaced at the start of the year. Mm -hmm. John Teeling is an astute astute businessman. I mean, there's yes. no dear doubt about it. So he's on about it's not long now till they will go to twenty four seven to still in in Dundalk. They're on two shifts at the minute, so yeah. five days a week. They're not a kick in the ass off going to to twenty four seven. 18 million litres uh, of pure alcohol of grain they can produce a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's phenomenal numbers. So mm -hmm. the market is there. I mean, the Asian it market, the, the, the Eastern European market. We, I, I think, and again, I, I, one of the things that I have to, when I, when I point out to people that where Irish whiskey auctions is at now is our global reach is just ridiculous now. I mean, the amount of stuff that we are shipping worldwide is mm -hmm. it, it just baffles me the <laughs> amount of american whiskey that we are sending back to america <laughs> lanterns and buffalo trace and everything back to america because yeah. obviously it's a price point thing that we, you know they either can't get it because they're in their state or the, the the prices are now going so bananas in there that it's it's all affordable here and again mm -hmm. i think we've we came just john teeling told me when within, I think it was about six months we were talking to him, he told me that we were early. He didn't think, we, he thought we were too early in the business. And I think we were just right. I think we just got it just yeah. at the time where, yeah. where the, 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 the revolution was just happening. People were joining and, and starting to talk about it. Who would have seen COVID coming? I mean, COVID really done us a favor because everybody yeah. was sitting at home and they <laughs> they couldn't spend money. They didn't know what to do, so they sat at home and got pissed. I mean, that's <laughs> that's always good. And everybody put a bit of stone weight. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't. I was all I was always. <laughs> that's not kidding me. Yeah. I, I I was getting trousers trying on there, forty four inch waist. 
Uh, That's yeah. bad. I, I remember it, but... when it was 44 inches raised, yeah. <laughs> I had to buy a new neck, a, a half inch larger neck, t- neck size. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I don't know if you've seen the video that I seen that I that I put on a suit. I was I had to wear a. I don't wear suits. I don't dress up. I had to wear a suit for a, a wedding I was at, and the guy appeared with a shirt and he sort of says, "You know what size shirt are you?" And I says, "Oh, I think about 18." Come on, put an 18 on. Wouldn't even go over my shoulders. 22 <laughs> inch neck I have on me. I'm like a like a wildebeest so, yeah. so uh, yeah i don't i don't worry i've just given up worrying about stuff like that wear yeah. black it makes you look skinny all right well that's funny enough <laughs> black tea black jumper <laughs> well, think when, i'm always uh, wearing black in the videos he is skinny he is skinny. skinny you're skinny you are skinny uh not really uh, no i got no, i'm not <laughs> i can do another wee bit off but no uh no at the uh so this month's auction Start at uh, Friday. 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 Last night. It was the last night. What <laughs> is today? Saturday. It is Saturday. Yes. Yeah, so um, last night at five o'clock, and people are away, mad shit again. <laughs> what am I looking at in this month's auction? I mean, we've we've uh, there's a Middleton there. Speaking of Middleton, there's a Middleton there was done for Glen Dimplex, um, distilled in 1973, bottled in 2008, mm-hmm. um, for their 25th anniversary. Fantastic bottle. Um, there is just so much stuff. Uh, again, we carried on our, our charity thing. We've got um, we've got bottle Most... number one of the uh, batch six single malt and the cask strength of uh, in that, and that's raising money for the Little Blue Heroes, which is a, a, a charity yeah. that helps little kids. I saw, I saw, uh, I saw your promotional video for that. Um. Mm. And you're talking about little brew heroes. I, I, I don't I don't know the charity. Um, the, the... They they sort of do things like uh, you know when kids want to be a fireman or a little bit be a policeman, so they they bring the fire brigade to them. Or I mean, there yeah. was a, there was a young kid in in Monaghan, County Monaghan, there. I think a couple of years ago, and he was terminally ill, and they 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 got drive bys with squad cars, or they brought them to the fire station and stuff yeah. like that. And it's it's sort of like that make a wish sort of type thing with, yeah, with, yeah, with a yeah. hint to uh, um with the, with to the to the to the frontline services. And then we have the lost Irish. It's not the lost Irish as Katie kept giving it to me, but <laughs> it's just called lost Irish. Uh, they've got their first five bottles, and that is raising funds for. The Alzheimer's Society of Ireland. So again, uh, yeah. something that's very personal to me and to Neil and, and Tim, who who yeah. are behind the, the Last Irish. But again, yeah. this look charity again. I mean, we we talk about it. I mean, we, we people go, you know, why are we doing it? Why wouldn't we do it? I mean, we're in a position where we can do it. So why yeah. not fucking do it? I mean, of course, it doesn't doesn't cost us. On the scale of things, it doesn't cost us anything no. really. You know, no. to do it so. Uh, no, and, and we congratulate it for it because, yeah, it's, it's the fact that you do do it is uh, means you yeah. 30, over, over 30,000 so far, or I think last year, something like that, some ridiculous amount. It's it's, yeah. it's just ridiculous. And I mean, again, as I keep saying to people, without people supporting us, or without you know, people bidding on bottles and giving us the bottles and that, I've got a very funny looking haircut and a very funny looking website, but that's about <laughs> it, you know. I'll, I'll never make it as a supermodel, so. I was thinking of doing an only only fans or something like that. What do you think of that? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably cost you money. People are paid to make me go away. You know that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, only fans, only fans, yeah. only no, fans, uh, only fans and horses. That'd be what I'd mind to be. Yeah. I, I, that, that would that would work. I bought just a, a little side thing. I bought a set of stamps. I bought a book of stamps. You know, first class stamp, and they're only full of the. The Royal Mail's trying to stroke me because they're only they're only fools and horses. They're not real. Not they're not yet. I have to. I can't use them. I have to go and buy other ones. I have to keep them. Uh, no, it's uh, it's funny. But no, the uh, the charity stuff's to be commended as um, and it's nice that you do it every month. Now the highlights. Of this are the the that Middleton bottle. Um, Nearly and, yet, Middleton. I mean, we mm. we have every so Justin actually <coughs> dust out the old wallet. There's a, if you want a full uh, Middleton collection, you can have every bottle. We have every bottle as an individual bottle in this auction bar in 1989. So you have yeah. 84 all the way up to 2021. 
and you can buy them all as individual bottles. Don't forget, oh. Justin, it's coming up to Christmas. All right. I've I don't if you haven't got the present sort of oh, I need the 89 to complete the collection. Oh, all right, okay. I'll, oh, yeah. the board, <laughs> yeah. I'll find you one. I will find you one. <laughs> I will get one for you. So they, everybody, uh, everybody thinks it's in that wardrobe there. That's not, that's not a wardrobe. That's just the cash wardrobe. No. <laughs> Uh, that's where he keeps the gold bullion. <laughs> uh, Waterford, actually, there's one for you. We we touched on it there. There's a load of Waterford in this month. I think there's yeah. 93 different bottles of Waterford in this month's auction. And do you think Waterford's coming back again? Because it, it went and then it sort of went like this. And is it what's it what's it going to do? Uh, I think people have changed their tack. I I've, the amount of people that have said to me. Do you know what? I'm not going to chase all the 1.1s. I'm now going to chase the cuvées. And they thought, there won't be as many cuvées. <laughs> and then Waterford go out and lash about four of them out in a row, and everybody's like, oh, fuck's sake, man. <laughs> what is that? I, 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 doing that. I love up never Mark Rainier does uh, stuff like that. Yeah. It, it does a sort of fucking yeah, yeah, makes yeah, me think. It makes me, it just these sort of piss people off. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think it is. Take really thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, like again, Dingle, I think, was one of the things. I said, I think, that the Dingle Batch 6 being the end of the collection changes the dynamic of Dingle. I mean, I think yeah. now it's a finite collection. It's one to six. You can get bottles one to six and get maybe the casks rent one to six. And that's it. That's the collection. Yeah. You know, the, the founding fathers will be whatever it will be. Um, but I think that, it, you know, that's maybe the collection that people thought Waterford were gonna, was going to be. Yeah. I mean, I initially, I don't know about you, I initially thought that Waterford were going to have a couple of core ranges and then the cuvées, the seasonal cuvées. But instead, they just fucking threw every bottle out every fortnight. And people I, I'd be honest with you, from day one, I was always a bit confused about the whole thing because it was like, how are 1.1, okay, we get one, but we're going to do a 1.2 from the same year, and then the next year it'll be a, a 2.1, but we we'll might do... And you're like, how the hell are you going to have a consistent product? Yeah. How, how are you... When I go to buy something... How do I know what it's going to taste like? You know, and then he really fucked everybody up. A couple of weeks ago, he went and he brought a 2.1 out for Gaia. And everybody was like, hang on. <laughs> What's the story here? It's supposed to be 1.2. Yeah. No, uh, but I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, do, I, I do kind of like what he does because it really sort of pisses people off sometimes. Yeah. But again, they're not fucking Pokemon. You don't have to collect them all. No, um, that's it. That's it. But I mean, the thing is, even to, just to buy it, to, to drink it, I think there's a there's there's a, there's there's a, a bit of an inconsistency, and now they've got the cuvee out and said this is this is our product, this is what it's going to be. I haven't actually got it yet because I haven't really had time. Which cuvee? That's the Darren nice I think because there's micro cuvees, there's mini cuvees, there's mini coopers, there's mini clubmans, <laughs> there's mini countrymans. You just I hear lads. Yeah, aye, I, but no, the the it's the, the the main one, the one that they say that. The, the, Lee had done the artwork for the the, the cuvee, just the cuvee. Yeah. That they've said, said is going to be their stand up product. That's and yeah. I haven't got, I haven't had a chance to, to to taste it yet because, unfortunately, I've been for the last two weeks. I've been well, fortunately, I've been up and running. I've been working, so I haven't really had a chance to get it. But anyway, so there's a question in. Yeah, there's a question in. Joe Baker uh, 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 is asking. What software and video servers are you using to get this good interface? John, it's it's one called Be Live, and if you'd like to get it, there's a discount link to it if you want <laughs> to get this. It's Be Live, or if you want me to do it for you, if you're running some sort of show or something like that, there I can do that for you if you want. Uh, so that that is what it is. It's called Be Live, and it streams to. Uh, RMTP, it streams to LinkedIn, it streams to YouTube, and it streams to Facebook as well. And it ain't Zoom because it's shit. <laughs> All right, it ain't Zoom. There you go. And there, there goes a review of Justin for this month's tech review <laughs> excursion. <laughs> Listen, we better we better do one or two more before we hit the ninety minute mark. Uh, Waterford are pulling a tailings. Uh, Water, Waterford are pulling a tailings that are just too many expressions. You can never have too many expressions. <laughs> never. Trust me. Dingle are coming on in a week or two, and we, we love expressions. And Ian, Can I say something on that? I actually, I, I will be brief on this. The, don't forget, the whole objective of a distillery is to make whiskey and sell it. Mm -hmm. So people give out about I me. Mean, people give out about JJ Louise and JJ Corey when she was bringing out all the bottles. Going, oh, fuck's sake, I can't keep up. 
she's like, you know, she's a hamster on a wheel. That's what she's meant to do. Uh -huh. I, I, what I meant earlier on about forcing people to, to decide what they're going to collect, I didn't mean that as a bad thing. I mean, yeah. there was a time when you could have probably bought Had all bought. of it. Yeah, yeah. Bought all. But what, as it, boom, 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 it's actually forced people to go, right, well, I'll just do the, I'll collect the Causeway collection and the other stuff will just buy the drink, you know, and, and maybe do a mix of both. But yeah. that, having that collection, and it's just sort of focusing people. Um, and in some ways, it's sort of forcing people to do brand loyalty. You know, they are just saying, oh, okay, I'll just, I like I like the Bushmills or I'll take a punt on the Bushmills or, or whatever. So it's not, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean that as a, as a, a, a an aspersion on anybody, but or, or or any company either, but it just sort of focuses people that this is what we're going to have. This is what I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick that, and that's the one I'm sticking with. Um, I had a question. I had a question in my head there. No, surprise, surprise, it dropped out. Uh, in terms of the newer distilleries coming out, now you you be a man that may, may be well placed for this. All of the newer distilleries are opening up. They're going to have to have something new to bring to the market as such. You know, they're going to bring up. And where do you see that going? Because, I mean, there's lots of new innovations. We've seen the different cask finishes. We've seen single cask this. We've seen this finished in this cask. And we've seen people bringing out this is the cask drink version. And this is the. Are, are the new guys, do you think, going to have to copy that style or are they going to be. I think the, the, the world's their oyster, really, in a way. I mean, look at the cask finishes that are open to them. I mean, there's loads of different mm. maturation options and cask finish options. But then you've got things like blended malts and, and, and yeah. all that sort of stuff. I mean, like, thank God, in a way, that we have the scope that we have in Irish whiskey that we can do the various things that they're going to do. I mean, look, again... <laughs> What's John Teeling's statement? I mean, it's three ingredients. I mean, it is literally three ingredients. Mm -hmm. So it, they can't, you know, start throwing in, like, you know, slice up two hamsters and throw it into this month's one and, and make stuff special <laughs> out of it. I mean, it is literally... <laughs> Would that not be the biodynamic stuff from work? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the vegan friendly one. Um, you know, that the, the, the thing about it is that there, there's only so much that they can do with it. But, I mean, again, it doesn't have to stop at that or it doesn't have to... Mm. Uh, I mean, if, if somebody else is doing a sherry cask, does that mean, oh, well, I'm not going to buy it from... Like, because Ecklinville does it, well, I'm not going to buy it from, from Sleeve League or I'm not going to buy it but from... But they all yeah. seem to copy each other. They always seem to do an orange one. They always seem to do a coffee <laughs> one. They always seem to do a certain type of cask. I mean, it... Let's face it, come on. Surely there's bound to be some product confidentiality and somebody will come out with something that throws I'll a curveball, Anthony. Are you walking around in a big puffer jacket at the minute? No. Well, apparently that's all the rage. Apparently, according to Katie... Oh, I do, I, I, do, I, do have, I do have one. <laughs> Sorry. Look, 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 you know, there you do. I, I, do, I, do, I, do, I do have one. Look, there you go. I, I <laughs> knew one, you had to have one. Is, exactly. So yeah. that's all the rage. So it's about fashion, too. I mean, look at podcast. Yeah. I mean, nobody, nobody talked, um, nobody thought was talking about port cask. It was a, an exception. But I mean, mm -hmm. in the last eighteen months, I mean, all the good whiskies, not yeah. all the good whiskies. I mean, some of my favourites lately have been um, ports. I mean, the, just what I was on about earlier on, the Liberator or uh, the old Comer, the 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 new the old Comer. Is, uh, um, that's that's. Honey barrels are huge in the States right now, says John Baker. Make sure you comment, like, and share, and hit subscribe on YouTube, John, and use that link to buy Be Live. But we had Honey Barrel about five years ago, Honey Barrel. Everything was a Honey Badger here, wasn't it? <laughs> honey Badger, Honey Barrels. <laughs> honey Badger. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, I, again, I... I keep saying this. I've I don't really have a sweet tooth, and the honey stuff never really twigged for me. Loved it, loved it. Ah, but you've that, that's that's why you, that's why you have uh, borderline 40, diabetic. Forty four <laughs> inch waist. That's why. I wasn't going to mention. I wasn't going to mention that. I was going to mention your diabetes. Uh, but that, that's and I mean again, you yeah. look at you look at what what the the variations that that even I, I keep reverting back to Dunville's. They've done the, the Palo Cortado and the, the Oloroso cast now a few times. 
but the variances in the in the whiskey mm -hmm. itself is huge. So yes, look, I, I don't think we're gonna get to a point where everybody's going, ah, fuck, not that again, ah, not that again, because there's so much scope when you've got innovation on mash builds, you've got innovation on maturation, innovation on on finishes, you know, on the age, on blends. I mean, yeah. there's there's you know, it's like a Ford Transit. I mean, what seventeen thousand different combinations. <laughs> so like, I mean. And well, the other thing is now they're they're changing the the tech file for pot still, and that opens yeah. it up even yeah. further again. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and 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 did you do did you do the the Bawan? Um... Oh man, I ge I genuinely I I've, I I talked about this one night and we interviewed I interviewed Fanon and stuff. Um, when I done it live that night, and I I I'm one of these people I don't tend to do that kind of thing a, a lot of the time and get involved with all that kind of stuff. It's just kind of the person I am. And I thought, and that's this... Well, some... And, and I know that sounds stupid, but in some regards, I actually am. I just... I'm like, mm, I'll just sort of sometimes keep myself to myself. But anyway, I'd done the bow on, and I sat there, and I was listening to Matt Healy, and I was listening to Fanon and, and, and uh, Michael and stuff, and I actually felt as if I was taking part in something important. I, I genuinely thought mm. that is... It, it, it touches... Everything that anybody who enjoys whiskey or likes whiskey would like about it. It's historic. It's tasty. It's looking at the future. It's got all the little things. And it was beautifully presented. And I, I heard somebody say, oh, but it's 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 um a hundred pounds for, for ten min miniatures. Give away. Look, I thought it was a, I thought it was a bargain for what you were getting. They might have worked them and then they put that together. It was just yeah. phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, and and and, it, and, and, it and in is, seven years' time, when they bring those whiskies out, you eat to see what price those boxes are. Yeah, I, I'll be selling them. Don't worry, I'll be still selling them. <laughs> uh, but again, and and it just it, that that even answers the question about what you were saying is that that like I mean mm. the innovation that's in that alone, the vintage mash builds. I see uh, Mr. Watson's grace us with his presence. <laughs> there, um, he's, he's appeared out of uh, the the darkness. Um, I suppose it's coming near midnight, so we'll be waking enough. Right. Um, but I mean, you know, what they can do up there, what they are having an eye to, what Brendan's doing with his little mash bills and, and stuff like that. Look, mm -hmm. the, I, it's the one thing that I'm not worried about. Yeah. I think, you know, that's the thing. I my More my concern is, is how is there, you know, it would be brands doing a disservice to irish whiskey i mean yeah all of these new brands that's in america and it's just you know uh, sort of short of sticking a, a shillelagh and, and a leprechaun in the front of it and calling it top of the morning to your whiskey i mean you know <laughs> seriously i mean i know i know uh, that's um, where we're at and we're not a kicking yeah. the ass off that with some of them i mean come on uh, i mean they uh, were even slagging me calling one two gingers what's that about <laughs> You stand, you know, the front of that should be you standing like beside a mirror, like that. Yeah, <laughs> just the yeah. three changers. You have to be a big fucking mirror, man. Just, you know. Well, but you can have one of those. the top and the shorts in the bottom. <laughs> Do you know one of those? You know one of those whole, uh, fairground ones. You're standing, yeah. what squeezed that in the Is that what you're saying, Marty? Is that what you're saying? You have to dig well, think, just thinking uh, about the, you know, the. Jesus. the you're having the a little and go. You were slagging Justin about his diabetes and 44 inch waist. Now you're calling me fat as well. You may just quit now. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if you, the, I'm thinking of the aesthetics for the front of the bottle, you know. I think just me in fishnet stockings and a shirt and tie. There you go. That <laughs> would sell. Come on. I tell you what, we could have you, you and then Justin in a ginger wig, sort of front and back of the bottle. Do you remember, do you remember Virgin Cola? What Virgin Cola. <laughs> Hold on, I I'm going to stick to the the product band. My, my one for the, the Michael Ignite or Michael Ignite was better last week. Yeah. Than oh, Michael yours. No, why? No, but I'm, I'm just thinking you in the front and that shaped. Do you remember the Pam Landron shaped Coke ball? That That's what I look like. That's literally what I love. <laughs> you can have a bottle of that whiskey shaped in like you took <laughs> Small and fat. Yeah, that'd be right. Yeah, I know where you're going with that. Again, you're flagging me. I don't know. You're lucky <laughs> you've got no feelings. You'd hurt my feelings if you did. <laughs> uh, one, one and a half litre ball. <laughs> Little squat you're, one. You're terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. That's terrible. Uh, no, you no. invite your guests on and then you abuse them. Well, look, I, this isn't going to last this show. How long uh, have you been doing this? 
<laughs> not three years. You just won't last. Oh, no, no there, how about, about a year and a year and a half now? A year and a half, anyway. Yeah. So what else do you do? They were able to. They were able to have a life. No. Well, not, not during COVID, though. Yeah, I'm sure we weren't allowed out of the house in case the COVID police put us. But it's yeah. a so, so, somebody said, Frank Hearn, sir, saying, should, 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 should we do a nine o'clock start? Move the show to nine o'clock, like the news, move from nine to ten and then ten to nine. Uh, well, put it like this, we never know what we're going to get. You never know what we're going to get. You're going to have to do it now. I mean, when you start going back out and having a social life and sort of, I mean, you can't be oh, doing no, 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 no. You see, you can actually record this and then put it out as live, and not people don't same. know the difference. No, it's not the same. Look, are you calling your your viewers and spectators stupid? There's no, you can't be doing that, lads. You have <laughs> to do it live. We're slagging off our guests, sir. Yeah, you're slagging off guests. You're slagging off your people, your viewers. You are like, shit. So, so, so some weeks when it's recorded, they ask the people who just said <laughs> he can't come on because he's on holiday, yeah. uh, but he's on here now. They think they don't realize he's not actually there, and, and we Justin, have to answer the question for them. But Justin, you do this on the radio, and I know, uh, and you I know. Do, and people phone in and ask, he's recorded, and he says it's a recorded interview, <laughs> and people still phone in and ask the question. And it's like, well, they, well, no, they, they didn't realize, not... they didn't realize in the studio it's him. <laughs> so he knows, he knows nobody, nobody, nobody's allowed to come in for COVID. But I'll tell you, somebody actually once got fired from Sky News from this because they showed a recording of a missile test. I mean, it's complicated. It's, uh, uh, but I knew it was recording because you, you're never going to see a real missile being fired. But he, he, he actually got he got he got let go from Sky News or something like that over over that doing a recording. Where, where was so, it? Where was that special being fired in Carrick? No, it was being fired the Persian Gulf or somebody. But I always tell people it's recorded and it actually comes up live in the corner here, but we can't see it. It comes up live in the corner. Where is it? Up there somewhere. It comes up. Where is it? I can't show it because I can't, can't put my finger into your screen because this is real. <laughs> but uh, it comes up live and then in the replay it comes up transmitted live earlier. You know, so uh, pe people don't mind. I mean, it, obviously, you know, if... If I if I have a weekend away somewhere, which hopefully will be a thing eventually, uh, you know, way. if if you if you're if you're in a different if you're in a different time zone, it's very easy to do this because I could just do it in my lunch break at work if it was a different time zone in the world I was in. You, you, you would need a job first, Justin. Is that? I can know. That will be a key part. Of the obviously, if it was in Saudi Arabia, I mightn't be able to do it because they might imprison me for talking about alcohol. But we've got quite a lot of viewers there because I can tell you, you know, uh, where the viewers are. But uh, Fun, funnily enough, they're not making too many comments. No, they're, 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 they're never going to comment. Fun. Justin was telling me we have, we had certain people in Afghanistan watching it. They've dried up somewhat recently, Anthony. Right. <laughs> well, with regime change. Regime I can't imagine change. why. <laughs> I can't imagine why they would no, have been right now. No. You can imagine them all sitting around in the shisha on a Saturday night going, yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can sing her break, Anthony. We can sing her break. We can sing her break. Zuckerberg's down most of the time we, now anyway, so we never know. We were getting serious uh, web attacks. I, mm -hmm. I definitely thought uh, Kim Jong-un had something in for me <laughs> because the amount of hacking attempts that we had from North Korea, I was going, lads, seriously. I was thinking, I know yeah. I've offended a few people in my life, but Kim Jong-un, I think that's a bit of a stretch. You know, so... No, they, I mean, they just attack anybody for badness, you see. Sure, no, and sure and because you're a, a major product like Irish whiskey, the, obviously they go up. They, go sure they, brought, they brought, I mean, they, they caused a huge amount of damage to Whiskey Auctioneer. Was it the start of last year? What, was it, it the Koreans? I think it was the Koreans come in and basically just wiped out the whole site. So it was. Yeah. I think it was the Koreans. Don't, uh, don't go it, was, like it, it used to be we, we had on... on because we our old platform right up until June this year, we were using it was essentially based on a WordPress platform, which mm -hmm. is probably one of the most hacked things in the world up there. Hit WordPress, with, hit WordPress, with, but anyway. yeah. But uh, uh, I mean, the amount of hacking attempts we used to get, and I mean, the lads would be literally flat out. Now, we don't deliberately don't hold any bank details or payment or credit card like details on our site for that very reason. Yeah. So even worst case scenario, if we ever did get breached. There's nothing there. They can't get it. And it's all just remote links and, and encoded links. But I mean, it, it's just mad that that's the world we live in now, that you have to have an eye to these things. I mean, yeah. Again, 
I, I, I won't tell you one of my... <laughs> I they don't, don't they don't tell no, us that no, Kim, Kim Jong Un's a major buyer. This, this, this could get me into serious trouble. We used to have a a, a streaming service for uh, um, mass and all that for one of my my other company. We do um, TV services for nursing homes, uh-huh. and we do mass on a Sunday and all that sort of stuff. And so we used to have the stream up all the time, and then when the mass had come on, it would broadcast the mass. That was well and good until one Saturday afternoon it got hacked and we had hardcore porn being broadcast into the nursing homes. That uh, wasn't great. That just no. was a very... There was uncomfortable conversations that day, <laughs> let me tell you. Very uncomfortable conversations. Just, Justin, could you explain your whereabouts on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Saturday night? Just, it was... And it, it, it sort of, the phone started ringing. I remember the first phone call and I took it and I went, what? And it was really, it was sort of like flipping the... What are you talking about? What, that's what a, do you mean? A, have they reinstated Bishop Casey again? Yeah, it was, just, <laughs> it was bizarre. I mean, somebody's telling you about this rather heavily endowed man being on screen and you're just going, what? I, I don't know what you mean. And apparently something like that in the nursing home with people full of drugs and stuff <laughs> isn't a good idea. So who would have thought it, you know? So, oh, dear, oh, dear. That, that's, you see, people think that my life is relatively boring <laughs> and mundane. This is the sort of stuff I do on a regular basis. Right, yeah, no, it, uh, it does happen. People don't realise it. People no, don't realise it. And you're dealing with technology. It is it is susceptible to stuff like that. One of these nights, you're going to start speaking Korean. <laughs> you never know. I, I, can, I, I can assure you, I won't. I, I, I won't. Because always, always buy an American system. Because they, they they will take great offence and great umbrage if anybody tries to hack it. <laughs> now, big guy, I'm going to have to go to my bed because I surprisingly enough, I have to get up in the morning and do a bit more work. I I've had a, I've had a group of we started over twenty four. There's two people that some happened and they had to go back to the states, and and this week they've just been. The, the the nicest people honestly just an absolute pleasure and a joy to spend a bit of time with them so I, I oh what's that he's got the jing he's got the the, the dingle oh, right. dingle batch six number honest six God, that's number not six. bottle number one I I honestly didn't didn't <laughs> drink bottle number one that's when we tried to get and we couldn't get it it sold out everywhere I know nothing about it Geronimo <laughs> I'll send you a sample Justin. No. Justin, Justin, you have the money to be able to afford to buy it whenever it pops up at auction. Huh. See, uh, I, might, <laughs> I, I might, I might do, I might do bad enough, bad and enough. You have to say <laughs> other other auction sites are available. Sorry, all, other auction sites are available. Yeah. Um, well, they're not yeah. as good. We don't, we don't really, because the well, rules of broadcasting don't, don't have really apply I mean... to the internet. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Listen, Anthony, a pleasure talking to you as always, buddy, and. Uh, Listen, keep going, do what you're doing, because I, I think it's superb what you're doing, and it always has been, and just keeps getting better and better. So, and I do, I do, I do genuinely watch all of your videos with you and Kay, and mostly as Kay standing there going, oh, "He's a dickhead." He's a dickhead. No, that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> Such as, yeah. are you not going to tell them about? <laughs> as you waffle on, and it yeah, goes, yeah. yeah. It's like it's, nice, it's, nice, it's like. It's like trying to corral mongoose. It's the only way to describe it because I'm just, you know, it's random shit what comes into my head. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, Here's uh, one for you. Here's tonight's thought. Oh. When you're going to bed tonight, think about this. Have you ever drank milk from the same cow twice? Yes. Not I knowing that. know that. I mean, you've gone into Tesco's there to buy your liter of milk. Do you think it was from the same cow? Well, well Are you building I, up a relationship I, with her? <laughs> Well, well, I used to actually walk. Well, my mum used to walk me in the pram to the actual, the actual milk and butter, which was on our neighbour's farm. And I did actually get the milk from the same cow twice. And there's one up here, birds. You could probably get them from the same cow twice. <laughs> just saying, just saying. You know, the only thing, it just reminded me of a joke that uh, the first time I ever saw Billy Conley, the first thing I ever heard him say live was whenever he came on the stage, he says, who discovered you could drink cow's milk? And what was he doing at the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a better one for you. Do crows have jobs? Do who? Crows. 
You know the way they all know. leave in the morning when they're in the, they're, they're in the rookery <laughs> and they all fly in the morning. Where the fuck are they going? They all well, come have have you seen that movie Journey to the Center of the Earth? Well, the, 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 the fly down through holes and then they get bigger because gravity gets less and then they attack people oh, in B movies. Oh. I reckon oh. you imagine, and then the crew, you know, he's after having a day. He nearly got hit by a car. He walks into the nest. He's Jesus, Mary, you'll never believe what happened to me today. I was that close. close. That close. <laughs> well, here, here's the other thing. I found out the other day. There's a place, I was in Scotland. I was coming through a place called Tarbit, right? And Tarbit is the scene of a thing called Squirrel Wars. The grey right. squirrel has been attacking, but the red squirrel is mounting a comeback, fighting back. Yeah. Fighting back. Apparently, this is what happened. And I, I, this came into my head while I was talking to people on the, on the coach. Apparently, the pine marten is munches squirrels, okay? So, munchy, munchy squirrels. But the red squirrel, now this is what the ex experts say. I swear, to, I swear to God, this is what the experts say. The red squirrel knows to get out of the way of the pine marten. Out of the way. The grey squirrel hasn't evolved this yet. Now, surely, God, if, if the squirrels of a Friday evening... She, Jimmy the squirrel shouts to Mabel, Mabel, I'm away off down the pub tonight. Down the pub, down the pub. And they're sitting around having a pint and go, has anybody seen Brian? Yeah. No. He sent me that pint Martin did the other day there and he hasn't come back again. <laughs> you know, the pint Martin fight up brown for a coffee and what you know, surely it only takes one grey squirrel before it goes around maybe on squirrel Twitter or whatever to tell other people, you see the pint Martin. Stay away from him. Yeah, get away from him. Because yeah. apparently that's what the experts say. The greys haven't evolved to know that the Pied Martin munches them yet. Seagulls are all on the dole. All seagulls uh, are on the dole. Absolutely. They're just bums. <laughs> and cows don't eat grass going downhill. That's true. That's uh, true. Uh, and 70% uh, uh, of them eat north, west, north south <laughs> rather than we, we know this. awake at night. I'm, I'm lying in bed. You know, drinking my third bottle of whiskey for the day, <laughs> lying in bed thinking about cows eating grass going downhill, live, uh, 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 seagulls with Liverpool <laughs> accents on the dole, giving you bad manners, and crows getting up in the morning having to go to work. Go. Oh, by the way, uh, don't not to cast aspersions on the good people of Liverpool. Other nefarious towns in England are available other than <laughs> Liverpool. He said it, he's from Dundalk. <laughs> yeah, he's from Dundalk, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. Squirrels, care, in the pub. Squirrels in the pub, what a show. Targets, I'm going to change the name of this to Squirrels in the Pub.